the moon landing, arguably one of mankind's greatest achievements. Or was it? A popular conspiracy theory is that the moon landing was in fact shot on a set or recreated with CGI. In this video, I'm going to be exploring that second idea. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for CGI. This is a still from the broadcast of the moon landing in 1969. The first thing that stands out to me is the exposure. As you can see, the highlights are completely clipped on the floor. The next thing I notice is the vignetting on the frame. The center of the image appears fairly clean, but as soon as you start to move towards the edges of the image, you can see some very clear darkening. There's also some quite distinctive scan lines running through the frame. And the last thing I can see is some slight ghosting. If you look closely at the edge of the astronaut, you can see a doubling effect. So all of these things are elements that I will try and introduce when I'm making my CGI versions. So here we go. As well as analyzing that individual shot, I also collected a few screenshots from the broadcast of different moments and camera angles just to give myself more reference. I also grabbed a few images of the lunar lander. My plan is to find a model of this so I don't have to completely remake it. With the mood board collected, I jumped online and browsed a few different 3D model websites. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything particularly good. This 3D model of the Apollo 11 lunar module was the best I could find, but as you can see, it's gonna need some serious work. Next up, I found this nice model of the United States spacesuits. I don't know if these were the exact ones used for the moonwalk in 1969, but again, because of the nature of the footage, I think this will be fairly forgiving, and it looks pretty close to the part. With the models downloaded, I started by rigging the astronaut. I'm using Blender's Rigify add-on to make a nice IK rig, so it's just a case of quickly lining up all the bones to match the astronaut model, and then generating the IK rig and parenting everything to it. I did a small amount of work on the materials, but they didn't need much tweaking. I just made them a little bit brighter and adjusted the roughness of the visor just to get a bit more texture. Then I started on the lunar module. In the references, this middle section is covered almost completely in gold foil. So to improve on its current low poly form factor, I remeshed it in sculpt mode and then used the cloth simulation brush to pull it around a little bit and create some creases. This went a long way in giving the geometry a lot more detail. And then on top of that, I created a metallic gold material and then combined a few different noise textures to create some crease detail. To improve slightly on the model's low poly nature, I used a kit bash kit of some sci-fi parts to add some additional mechanical detail to the structure. I grabbed a few bits that I thought would help and then placed them strategically around the model in places that they would be seen and break up the silhouette to add some contrast and detail. Then it was time to start blocking out the shots. I managed to find some really good material maps for the moon online. They were 8K and had great images that I could use for the displacement maps to create the terrain. So I sculpted a plane vaguely to the shape I wanted, then added an adaptive subdivision surface modifier, and then applied the displacement map in the shader editor so it would displace the geometry. It took a bit of dialing in to get the displacement correct and then moving it around till I got the right framing, but eventually I landed on something I was pretty happy with. For lighting a space scene, it's really important to understand that you only really have one light source in space, which is obviously the sun. There's a bit of bounce light which is coming from the sun reflecting off the moon's surface and then bouncing back up from the floor. But in general, everything's extremely directional and depending on where the sun is, you get very long shadows. I made sure to set the world lighting strength to zero so that there was no HDRI and the world was completely black to emulate space. And then I'm just using one of Blender's sun lamps. I put it roughly where I wanted and then refined the lighting a bit later. Then it was time to start animating. The animation for this was pretty simple, and it was also helped by the fact that because there's low gravity on the moon, all the movements are slightly uncanny and slow and have a bit of a floaty feeling to them. I tried my best to capture that reduced sense of weight on the astronaut's body, and then periodically I would do a viewport render and watch it in real time. Then I would go back and adjust the spacing between the keyframes or whatever needed doing until it felt more natural. At this point, I also set my aspect ratio to be 4x3, rather than 16x9, which later became the modern standard. Then I started roughing out the second shot, which was the wide. I got the lander and the astronaut in a place that I felt was working compositionally. And then for this shot, I did actually cheat the lighting a tiny bit. Although most of the heavy lifting will be done by the vignettes and compositing, the foreground was way too bright and it was really throwing me off while working in Blender. So I created a digital flag, which I was using to block the light, and added a gradient so it feathered off into being transparent. Then I could just position this until I had a nice shadow that was naturally falling in the foreground, giving the lighting in the shot some shape already in the render. Next I tackled making the flag. I modelled a quick flagpole, then added some geo for the flag itself. I unwrapped it and applied an American flag texture, then subdivided it slightly and started working on a cloth simulation. Like with the animation, I was keeping in mind that there's lower gravity on the moon, as well as there being no air so everything like drag is affected differently in space. I turned the gravity off completely for the simulation. I know that's not completely physically accurate, but it was much easier to get the result I was going for. I played around with the stiffness and dampening settings of the cloth simulation slightly, but I kept finding due to the movement of the flagpole coming down, it kept folding in on itself and ending up in a very strange position. If you look at the real footage, you can see it stays pretty rigid throughout the entire shot. And at the end, they hold it up to camera so you can see the American flag very visibly. To cheat this slightly, I ended up putting a wind force field behind the flag. I increased its strength just until the point where it would catch the flag slightly and keep it straight 
weight. And then to avoid it adding too much extra movement to the simulation, I keyframed the strength of the wind to go back down to zero so it wasn't affecting the movement anymore. So it was a bit of a cheat, but in the end I got the result I was after, and so I baked out the simulation and rendered everything to composite. I rendered the background of the moon separately, and then I rendered two passes for the foreground. The first was the beauty, and then the second was a utility pass. This contains cryptomats and depth information. I started by using the depth pass to add some subtle depth of field into the foreground, just to create a bit of separation. I used the cryptomats just to balance a couple of the elements of the CG. I felt these foreground poles were slightly distracting, so I created a mat for them and brought down their exposure so they were less prominent in the frame. Then I started adding all the fun creative stuff. I rendered with 10% overscan so I can add some nice lens distortion. Then I tackled the overexposed glow look that I showed at the beginning. I ended up achieving this with a couple of different glows, one just on the extreme highlights and then one that was more of an overall glow for the whole shot. To make the scan lines, I used a checkerboard, scaled down the squares to be tiny, and then stretched it horizontally so I just had one lot of lines going through the whole frame. I then used this as an alpha to slightly distort the footage, so wherever the white lines are is shifting the image over by a few pixels, creating this slightly interlaced look. Then I'm scaling the footage down and then scaling it back up. This introduces a lot of pixelation and also some artifacts from the resizing. Normally this is something you would try to avoid, but in this case because I'm trying to mess the image up, it actually works in my favour. I added a saturation node and took all the saturation out so it's purely black and white, and then created an elliptical mask which I used for the gradient. I softened it off a lot so it was very gradual, but I made sure that the corners of the frame really dipped down into almost complete darkness. To create the ghosting effect, I just transformed the entire image over, then screened it back over the original plate. Then by turning the mix down, I can introduce more or less of the ghosting and doubling effect. Because the blending mode is set to screen, you only see this effect on the bright parts of the image, as opposed to doubling up everything in the frame. And finally, I felt like the playback was a bit too smooth. The original broadcast is quite juddery, and feels like it's a much lower frame rate. So to do something similar, I added a frame hold in Nuke, and started by setting the increment to 3. This means it will only play every third frame of the render, and it will hold it for 3 frames as well, so it feels like it's a much lower frame rate. Then to make it fluctuate slightly, I multiplied the increment by a noise modifier, so it would go between about 2.5 and 5, making the frame rate variable throughout the shot which felt more like a stuttering live broadcast rather than just a fixed frame rate. Then for the final touches I brought it into Resolve to do a colour grade. Most of the look development I'd already done in compositing, like the vignette and the softening of the image. There's just a few things that I thought would be better handled during the colour grade. First of all I played with the contrast. I lifted the blacks significantly in the shot which gives it that faded look. If you look at the original images again, the blacks are extremely lifted so I was trying to mimic that in my renders. Then I added some grain. Technically this should be digital noise rather than film grain but it looks pretty similar, especially after YouTube compression I don't think anyone will notice anyway. It's just to add that static effect to break up the cleanness of the the render. Then just for fun I started messing with some of the open effects in Resolve and actually found a few that worked really well. There's a plugin called Analog Damage which allows you to introduce loads of retro overlays and implement things like VHS effects onto your footage. I didn't go too strong but there's a couple of things that I found that worked really well. One was called Broadcast Signal Noise which gives some kind of flashes of various colours throughout the frame. There's also a slider for ghosting in this which I turned up. I already did this effect in Nuke but I ended up adding some more in Resolve as well. I just thought it looked cool so why not? And the second effect I use is called JPEG Damage. This is mostly for messing up the the resolution and adding extra compression into your image. As you can see here I messed with the quality and resolution to soften the image a bit more and also introduced some compression artifacts which is where you see these big blocks of colour appearing. I kept it pretty subtle but both of these effects that I added on the timeline actually went a long way. And that completes the final effect. Now all that's left to do is show the result. So there we go, those are my two shots that I've replicated from the moon landing. I think it's pretty faithful to the original. If you're interested, the project files and assets from this video will be available on my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.